one of the things that generalized linear models actually generalize is the relations between the predictor variables or variable to the mean of a distribution. So in regular normal linear regression, we have that mu i is equal to some beta 0 plus beta 1 xi. And this is in the case that we have only one predictor variable. And in generalized linear models, we have that some function of mu is equal to this linear predictor. And the question is, why do we even need to have this function? Why can't we just use the identity function, which we have here, which basically means that g mu of i is mu of i? Why do we need something other than the identity function? And I think the main reason is to preserve the linearity uh, structure. So this thing over here is a linear structure. It's a line, it's an hyperplane, etc. And if our data really comes, let's say like this, then maybe we don't need any transformation. Maybe a straight line works, you know, if this is mu and or y also, and this is x, then this line is mu, which is our linear predictor. And these points are the y's. So here would be the mu of that y and here would be the y of, uh, of that x. But if our structure wouldn't be linear, If we would see something like this, then a straight line might not do it anymore. This might be wrong. And maybe what we are looking for is some transformation, is some something like this. And in order to transform the, this structure to a linear structure, maybe we need to do some transformation on the muse. Maybe we say, that the log of mu is related to some predictor variable, linear predictor. And doing the log on these values will bring this line into something more like this line. There's also the reason of interpretability. Consider the case of a binary regression, where yi is a Bernoulli distribution with some probability p. Well, what is the mean of yi? The mean of yi, which is denoted by mu i, is just p, or pi in this case. And pi can only take values between 0 and 1. Now, a linear line, a linear structure, has to go through the entire uh, set of values. So, no matter which line we choose, unless we choose a flat line, yeah, but even the smallest slope, yeah, something like this, eventually when it comes to infinity, will cover all the values on this axis from minus infinity to infinity. So what do you do? What do you do if you have some x that the corresponding uh, y or mu value for it is above one, is 10? How do you interpret this? What does it mean to have uh, a mean of 10 when the mean can only be between 0 and 1? So one of the biggest reasons to use a link function is to make sure that the values you get for mu actually make sense. So for a Bernoulli distribution for binary or binomial regression, the most common link function is the logit. So the logit of mu is equal to some linear predictor, which is some beta 0 plus beta 1 x i, etc. And what is the logit? The logit is just the log of mu i divided by 1 minus mu i. And 
while mu i can only be between 0 and 1, the log of mu i divided by 1 minus mu i, the logit of mu i, can be between minus infinity and infinity. And the same goes for Poisson and gamma distribution. This distribution can only, the mean can only be positive. So we have to have some transformation that gives interpretable values for the means. So in this case, a log transformation might be useful or a square root transformation uh, because here the values can only accept positive values. Another important quality of the link function is that it has to be monotonic. Uh, it has to be invertible. So for each value of a linear predictor, there can only be one value of mu i and vice versa. So for the logit, uh, if we have log mu i divided by 1 minus mu i is equal to some linear predictor, then if we take the exponent on both sides, we get that mu i divided by 1 minus mu i is equal to the exponent of LP. If we multiply this, and eventually we will get that mu i is equal to ELP. And this is the sigmoid function. So mu i is actually equal to the sigmoid of LP linear predictor. And all link function must be monotonic and invertible so that every value uh, of the linear predictor has only one corresponding value of mu and vice versa. And every link function also has to be differentiable. And this is because we use differentiation in order to calculate the beta coefficients, these things over here. There is a special type of link function that is called the canonical link function. And this link function is the one that says that the natural parameter, the natural parameter I will introduce when we talk more about the exponential family, but each exponential family has a natural parameter to it. And if you just relate the natural parameter to the linear predictor, you get the canonical link function. So the canonical, the natural parameter is some function of, let's say, the mean, and this, and if you take this to be your to be your link function, then then it simplifies the calculations a bit and the whole math behind the generalized linear model. Finally, I want to focus on what the link function is not. The link function is not transforming the predictor or the covariate. It's not saying it's not saying log of x is related to some y yeah this is not what it's saying and it's also not uh, transforming the response it's not transforming the y's it's not saying log of y is equal to some x the response stays exactly the same the x stays exactly the same only the mu is changed so so this is something to realize that it's not exactly the same as transforming the predictors or the response. Yeah, it's not, but rather it's transforming the mu. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.